Um, this is the last session uh, of this PLA. Um, and it's the last gathering of Epnosol in the form we know it. The title of the session is What Have We Learned? How We Move Forward? Uh, I will not repeat the accomplishments uh, made by the Epnosol Network, but I will say that even at this point, I am not 100% sure whether Epnosol was a project or a network. This is a message to the Commission. I think we address the work activity in Epnosol, both from a network and a project perspective, which was extremely challenging, but at the end, I think we managed. So you can review, you, I mean the Commission, can review our work, both in terms as a network and as a project, and I feel confident that we will score rather well in your scoring system. Now, what have we learned? I'll tell you what I have learned um, from being engaged in um, Epnosom. I learned that there's a great deal of fragmentation. It's, there's a fragmentation if effect in relation to educational reforms in Europe. I'm not talking about school leadership. I'm talking about educational improvement, educational reforms. To quote Michael Fullen, there is disjoinment of the system from the schoolhouse to the state house. And um, this should become a challenge for us for the future. And that fact was discussed by numerous presenters these last two days. Incidentally, I should point out that Professor Fullen was invited but could not make it. Um, and the arrangements I made with him was that he would come when he's free, which is after uh, January 2016. So on our next meeting, we'll have the honor to have him with us. I simply want to tell you that some of our work is being negotiated with Michael. Um, so this disjointment of the system suggests that we need to address coherent and comprehensive policies. As our work is manifested through the toolkit, um, we have to embed the experience of school actors uh, so that we have more coherent policies and again, that is well reflected, in my view, in uh, the tool, tool set we developed. Another element that I learned from working in Epnosol is that the relational la nature of school leadership is perceived totally different in the different contexts in Europe, and therefore a place-based approach. Uh, is the methodology that should be applied as we have applied it in Epnosol. Again, that was highlighted by the different talks that were given these two days. I think Epnosol served as a learning organization and I I think Epnosol facilitated the creation of learning organizations in different countries across Europe. So what we preach is what we applied um, 
and I think that's a positive outcome from our work. Um, a piece of work that I was engaged with that the rest of you were not really engaged with has to do with communication with high-level policy. And uh, what I learned from the process of communicating with ministries and ministers and uh, advisors, as some of you are here, is that um, communication with high-level policy is a multi-step approach. In the first year um, of Epnoso, the Commission asked me, what impact did Epnosol make on high-level policy? In reality, I could not answer. And that's because we did not have resources. We did not have materials to communicate and to engage in the interaction. Materials were developed after at the second period of Epnosol and um, likewise on the third period. So the more resources we have, the better the communication. Um, another thing I found out is how to make European money go a long way. I think Epnosol made a good use of the funding um, the impact level achieved, as was earlier stated by Jerry, um, I think is beyond the initial expectations. And um, we followed the recommendations from the Council decision of 2013 that came out from the Lithuanian presidency rather well and um, to the best of my knowledge it's only Luxembourg in Europe that has not had some kind of contact with Epnoso. Um, I think we created an agency as Michael said yesterday and um, we have to be optimistic um, that our work will make an impact on school reforms and school improvement in Europe. The single most important outcome of our work, from my perspective, is the fact that we put as the nucleus for the discussion on educational leadership and or educational improvement, we made the issue of faculty as the nucleus. We put a focus on why school leadership. And um, I personally feel very proud uh, with the support given by the Hypnosal Network to create the nu that nucleus. So at the end, we are talking of epistemological issues as well. Um, the focus for equity and learning in relation to um, school leadership was initiated by the peer learning activity in Cyprus in 2010 that I referred to earlier um, in this meeting. However, the notion was enculturated through Epnoso. And I like to thank the academic group, what we called in year one the expert group that uh, helped Epnoso to put that focus in our work. Um, Professor Johansson, Professor Leif, 
Professor Scrads, Professor Woods, Professor um, Jackie, um, Lungby. Uh, <laughs> I hope I have not forgotten anyone. And Professor Early as well, who contributed. Uh, thank you very much for helping us put a focus in our work. Um, this is more or less what I learned from Epnosol. Working in Epnosol was not easy. Large network, a lot of people, different interests, um, different cultures. Um, however, I think we managed to successfully complete our work uh, as indicated from the successful completion of this PLA. Yeah? Um, what, from my view, what we have ahead of us um, we have to reflect on the recommendations that emerged from the work done in these last two days. Um, and from a contractual point of view, we have to put together a sustainability plan. And as most of you know, uh, we're in the process of negotiating the contents and the parameters of such a plan. What is certain, however, is that um, We have an invitation to continue our discourse uh, in the framework of the symposium organized by Stefan. So Stefan's presence here had a double role besides talking to us uh, to also open up his platform to us. Uh, Stefan, would you like to say a few words to this group? When uh, Kathy and I um, discussed the work of Epnosal, and um, I already had um, Pierre coming to, to your network meetings, um, we had this discussion about the symposium, and the symposium ideas is actually quite similar. It's networking networks. Yeah? And uh, discussing that, uh, and you said the project uh, finishes, uh, we had the idea of suggesting that we could run a pre-conference, like um, our conference starts on, um, at lunch, it goes uh, two days, half day, full day, half day, and we could have a pre-conference or post-conference free of charge. Um, I'm very happy to provide all the, the, the resources needed to host something like that. Um, also the idea was, could we have uh, someone from um, this group um, on the program committee of the symposium and um, schedule in the parallel program a, a network meeting? Um, then Kathy also asked, is there a special discount for abnormal people <laughs> at the symposium? And I think this is uh, also possible 50% or something I calculated. So there, it, it's, 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 uh, I think this, this should also be possible. Um, but what I think is important the, the symposium's idea is to, to bring people together from policy, from administration, from lead, from practice, from academia, and we already have this kind of spectrum. And it, it really mirrors what, what you have here. And in, in September, there are also ministers and, and director generals coming from other countries, for instance, from Australia, New South Wales. They had a big reform on equity, and, and he will come with uh, her di his director general. So we could also invite people who are already on as speakers planned um, for like an invited workshop where you have your, your meeting maybe prior because they, they don't arrive only just for, for, for their presentation. So there, there are some ideas where we can create synergy effects for one, that you can continue your work. There are some time windows open. Uh, and secondly, because we have kind of similar discussions. And uh, it's, it's not only about practice, it's about policy, it's about research. And obviously, policy, practice, research, they, they, they should work and collaborate very closely together. And this obviously, we have global problems on, on an international scale, uh, from my perspective. But that's, um, that's what, we, what we discussed. That's right. <laughs>
And by the way, a, a f personal final remark, if you haven't had the pleasure uh, to smell these flowers, <clears throat> I have uh, probably some kind of allergy. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. But if you don't have an allergy, they smell wonderfully. You should drop by and on the way out um, of, of this hall. Sit in the back. <laughs> All right, in relation to Stefan's offer to use the platform of his symposium, and given the fact that Life Moss is part of the organizing committee of the symposium, I propose that Life, you become the interface between the two organizations. Yes. I, I will be communicating with the partners, whatever is it you want to communicate, okay? Thank you. So, uh, task achieved. Um, another aspect uh, pertaining to sustainability that we have already structured is the forthcoming um, presidency of Malta and um, Epnosol is facilitating, in a way, the process of organizing the presidency. And I will let uh, Salvina say a bit more on that. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, as Cathy was saying, um, the overall priority for our presidency will be education for all. And we intend to work on avoiding social exclusion by trying to uh, work on a program on integration of children from migrant backgrounds. We are trying to do this um, in respect to language as well as to different culture awareness. As you know, um, uh, this is a big issue for Malta and uh, uh, if we believe what we say, education for all should include also the migrant children. Um, uh, we are also focusing our presidency on enhancing accessibility of education through digital means. And another initiative uh, we're taking is uh, um, uh, on compulsory education by trying to enhance comparability uh, and validity um, of informal and non-formal learning. And we're trying to do this by not saying that one is more important than the other, but by trying to give a valid validity for both, um, uh, meaning uh, tackling alternative ways of assessment. Um, and finally, but least, this is not the least, with Epnosol, we're trying to give a, a different uh, life or a, maybe a new life to the project um, because we, we hope to have applied um, for EU funding uh, with some partners from Epnosol um, uh, about CPD for our school leaders. So hopefully um, we shall meet in Malta. Thank you, Cathy. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sure we will meet in Malta at the beginning of 2017, the first quarter. Um, you know how presidencies are organized. They organize events like this and they invite people. So we'll be the first on the, your list, right? Okay. Um, in closing, I like to ask Philip Goods, who coordinated um, the development of the recommendations uh, to say a word into what are the main messages that came from the workshops. Right, thank you, Cathy. Well, as I've been sitting here, uh, because um, I read the uh, question, what have we learned? How do we move forward? I've got notes on that, as well as the uh, workshops. So I've got quite a lot to say, but I won't say it all. What I'll do, actually, I was thinking that what, one of the things I've learned is that Greece and the UK 
are more similar than I thought. That is, you can get up in the morning and you look out the window and it's a beautiful sunny day and you think, I think it's a great idea to have lunch outside. By the time lunchtime comes around, the clouds have rolled in and it's started to rain and you've got to ch shift everything inside. So that's a, a sharing of experience. To be serious, uh, one of the great things about the, uh, the network has been the opportunity to get an insight into different national contexts, different cultures, different levels of involvement in education across a whole continent. And that's a great learning experience. Um, and there's a, a lot yet to learn about it, but it does um, help uh, to put into context your own local um, situation, your own local national context. So that's been a great, a great thing. And I think that uh, although there is diversity, there's also uh, some common elements. And I think that the interest that there is in distributed leadership or teacher leadership, that idea of leadership being shared or spread in some way, whatever the terms that are used, has come through quite strongly. And I think it was evidenced in, certainly in the, the workshop um, activities that I went to, that was emphasized. I think a learning part of, of the whole process, uh, because of I and, uh, and Amanda have been particularly concerned with distributed leadership, part of the learning process has been to understand that although there's great interest, there's also a need to explain and to talk about and to listen to different ideas on distributed leadership, shared leadership, teacher leadership, what does it mean? Because there are different ideas, I think there are misunderstandings about what it is and, and so on. So I think one of the great learning things for me is that it's a reinforcement of the need to continue to reconceptualize understanding of leadership in a way that sees leadership as a distributed phenomenon. And that part of the future, uh, the way forward, I think, is to continue developing that. And certainly Amanda and I will be doing it in the context of the, um, our Centre for Education Leadership in Hertfordshire. But also, we are enriched and we're able to work with colleagues um, in different um, jurisdictions. Uh, Finland, Scotland, uh, well I say that's not a different jurisdiction in the UK, but within the UK, England and Scotland are, are very different, as you know from the pre presentations today. Um, people, colleagues in uh, Hungary, in France, and, and other locations um, en enrich our work, and we want to be moving that uh, forward in the context of what follows from um, at Nozzle. Just a couple of things from the, the workshops, um, very succinctly to say, one of the issues raised was about power relationships. It came up more than once. That is not mentioning it or not being explicit about power relationships or the need to um, address power structures. Um, and perhaps it needs to be brought up the agenda more. It was mentioned in the teacher leadership uh, workshop today, the importance of addressing power structures. So it's not that it wasn't mentioned, but something that uh, was reinforced from different perspectives. Um, I think that the, but the position of the senior leader in relation to distributed leadership, which Jerry mentioned um, yesterday and has come up again a number of times, the need to think about and rethink the role of the senior leader or head teacher or principal, the senior leadership team, in a context where you have shared leadership, a more distributed kind of leadership, what does it mean? And someone in uh, one of the workshops today said, uh, talking about, in fact, they were talking about lead, teacher leadership. They said, someone has to lead it, someone has to facilitate it. Those were their very words. And it encapsulated, well, is leading it the same as facilitating it, or is this facilitating it something different, or is it a different way of thinking about leadership? Um, I think part of the reconceptualization is thinking about what kind of philosophy underpins it. Yesterday I mentioned about the philosophy of dependence as underpinning the traditional view of leadership. I think we need to continually think about that and the alternative to it. A point that was made to me, uh, this was by uh, Professor Carl Bagley, about the tool sets. Have we sufficiently articulated the common 
themes or the common underpinning of the tool sets? I think it was a very good question. And um, Carl was getting at that the, there are commonalities of approaches. For example, the importance of recognizing that both the top-down approach and the bottom-up approach, or as Carl was saying earlier today, um, encapsulating that in the term uh, adaption. I think that, that arguably there is a, a perspective that unites the tool sets and that could be more clearly articulated and it would help us in reconceptualizing leadership. Finally, a question in one of the workshops was how, my, how can we be mindful in all we do, uh, how can we be mindful of equity in all we do? And I think I would say, well, we, the two questions, how can we be mindful of equity in all we do and how can we be mindful of learning in all we do? Because the theme is equity and learning. And I think it's often that the learning part is understood and people do relate to it. They, they understand that it's about children and learning and, and, and so on. But what kind of learning and how clear do we understand the kind of learning that we expect is a good outcome from education? It's something I think that we could be pushed more to the fore. In the distributed leadership tool set, we've talked about holistic learning being part of the definition of the view of distributed leadership in that tool set because it's a view of learning. I think it could be put more to the fore and made sure that we are mindful of that in everything we do in relation to leadership. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Um, may we now turn to the representative of the funding agency, um, Thomas. Thank you, Cathy. A bit of flowery talk from the commission now, because I can only confirm this. <laughs> the scent is really amazing here. So, um, I've no, 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 that's okay. That's okay. Um, yeah. yeah. We have to make a choice. We let everyone judge uh, uh, whether we've adopted or adopted. Um, but seriously, um, I think these two last days have been very insightful um, in the sense of the uh, that the insights gained about the workings and the achievements of this this network. And as Kathy said, um, there is uh, there is confidence and I, I can see that um, uh, uh, c coming out of the network and, and there's a positive outlook as well. That's very important for us. Um, I think there's a lot uh, you as EPNOSL can be, as members and partners uh, and so on of EPNOSL can be proud of, of what has been achieved. Um, about the knowledge co-created, about the, uh, the policy tools that you've developed, about the, uh, the, the toolkit that you've, we've discussed over the last two days. Um, but above all, and this goes back to the reason why and how it was set up, uh, about the creation of, uh, of a working network. And uh, Kathy, you mentioned, uh, is it a project, is it a network? We, we very much hope that um, it's more than a project, and that also leads to the whole question of sustainability, that it is more than a, and a network with a purely academic um, orientation, but that it is a, a policy network in, 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 in the sense, in, in the meaning of, 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 of those words, namely a, um, a network that manages to influence policy. Um, I've heard a learning organization. We hope that, uh, and, and I can understand that also from, from uh, this PLA, that uh, you haven't come, or we collectively haven't come to the end of the learning curve yet. So um, I would very much like to see this as a process that, that has started. Um, I can see uh, um, from the symposium um, about networking what is going on, not just at European level, but also in the different countries. So um, to conclude, um, there, is, there are discussions to be made uh, about sustainability. Um, I'm very happy to hear that these discussions are, are ongoing in the network, that they've started. And uh, um, I just want to reassure you that the Commission has a, a great interest in, in this to continue. There's a, um, 
it's a two-way relationship here. We, uh, uh, Epnosl has grown to be a, a resource and a support for the Commission on, on the issue. We've heard that the issue of school leadership is more important than ever. It will not go away. I'm very happy about the, uh, the, the uh, long-term priority and commitment uh, of, the, uh, of the upcoming Maltese presidency. Um, I'm also very happy in, in concrete terms to see that uh, th there will be already uh, in September the, the next meeting um, at the symposium in Switzerland. So um, the Commission uh, will, on the other hand, offer its, its, its support in, uh, to, to give EPNOSL and its partners a, a platform on different levels uh, at the different, through the different fora that we work with member states, be it at, uh, at the level of our technical working groups, be it at the level of the director generals for schools. And um, we can, um, in, in, in relation to the, uh, the, to the priorities that member states define, not just the presidencies, but more and also in terms of the long-term ET 2020 uh, work plan, um, we, we will do our best to keep this, to keep the topic of, of school leadership on the agenda. Um, Personally, what I, I, I've heard a lot of imagery uh, uh, that was referred to about this network. Um, so I will also go back with ideas. What, what is Apnosl at, at this moment, actually? I, I heard the, the train in motion. I think that was Jerry. It's a, um, that's a good idea, the motion aspect of it, that this is not, this is not the end. This will, uh, that Apnosl has just reached cruising speed and will, uh, will continue. Um, I've also heard the nucleus. I think Kathy mentioned that. That's also a nice one. A tapestry that's clear with lots of diverse uh, parts, maybe like this bouquet of flowers here. More colors probably though. Um, the, yes, exactly. The most intriguing one, and that will stay with me probably on my way back to Brussels, is the comparison to cloudberries. Mika said Ethnosl is like cloudberries, these exotic uh, Scandinavian fruits. I happen to have a, jam, a jar of cloudberry fruit jam in, 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 my, in my fridge, so I will definitely think of Epnosl when I come back home and of that image. I, I do like it, yes. Not every day, but I do like it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas, and thank you much for being here, and uh, our thanks to Sophie um, as well. Um, as we are approaching the closing, I like to give the floor to our evaluators, that's Jackie and Jerry, to make a final remark on their view of the work we have done, the impact it has, and especially of the potential of the work we've done. So let's start with Jackie. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to reflect on, very much a personal reflection on what I feel I've learned working with Jerry, evaluating the work of the network. Philip raised the issue of power. I'm really interested in power because educators often feel powerless. I've been fortunate in my life because there have been certain rare occasions when something I thought would never change has changed. Sometimes overnight, a, a kind of tipping point has been realized. And nearly always this is because what was the norm in the way people think about things almost overnight becomes unthinkable. And looking at the impact of this network, the way things have worked to influence policy has been because people have begun to think differently in their different contexts. When the network started, we focused on leadership, in my perception. It's now unthinkable to think about leadership without thinking about equity at the same time. Now, that may not sound like much of a change, but to me, it's huge. You will read the details of the evaluation in due course, but what it gives witness to is the enormous intellectual and social capital that has been gathered 
through the network and that has impacted on what people think is acceptable. And you can see the change, not everywhere, not at the same rate, but in a number of places in the values as well as the decision making and the practice. And we have done that. So we are a living embodiment <laughs> of that idea of Hannah Arendt, somebody mentioned yesterday, that individuals have no power. Power is given by a community. And the evaluation has taught me that, that we as a community actually have a lot more power than we think to work towards that tipping point that we all want to see our kind of picture of schools as equitable places where children's lives are enjoyable and fulfilling and lead to a good future. So if I sound very emotional about this, it's because it's been an emotional journey and I have enjoyed very much working with everybody, but I've enjoyed achieving things in a quiet way. So I'm not into giving you a long list of bullets of this policy, that policy, that policy in this location, because it doesn't work like that. What it means is people all over Europe are now thinking in ways they were not thinking before because of what we have done together. And if that isn't power and that isn't outcome, I don't know what is.